The title of our paper is Secure Sourcing of Commercial Off-the-Shelf Products, a Critical Missing Element in Software Engineering Education. The authors are Nancy Mead from the Carnegie Mellon University, Ann Conkey from the University of Detroit Mercy, and Dan Shoemaker, also from the University of Detroit Mercy. Software engineering education is justifiably focused on the development of software artifacts. According to the Software Engineering Body of Knowledge, software engineering is the application of a systematic, disciplined, and quantifiable approach to the development, operation, and maintenance of software. However, most of the software that is actually used in an organization arrives via acquisition, not custom development. Often the provenance of commercial off-the-shelf products is unknown because the creation of major commercial systems takes place through a supply chain, where often the software components are built and then integrated as a whole. One issue that arises is that the work at every level is typically sourced from parties that are unknown to the end customer. In essence, the acquirer rarely knows which suppliers did which work. There is no set policies or single structure that governs all of the components or organizations involved in a global supply chain or software supply chain. So it's not inconceivable that malicious code or counterfeit parts are also integrated. The emphasis in software engineering education has typically been on good design, secure coding, and effective testing. However, many business applications are no longer developed as a standalone product, but, re but actually require interoperability with a variety of other software applications. And as a result, the practical study of topics such as software quality and secure software acquisition do not fully address the product and programmatic interdependencies that exist when multiple applications are used to create a larger solution. Specifically, software engineering programs typically do not teach how to ensure that the code produced and sold in COTS products hasn't been compromised through the sourcing process. And so the challenge that we desire to address in this paper is that along with secure construction techniques, software engineering students need to be taught the process of supply chain risk management involving all stakeholders. In particular, among the stakeholders are not only those software engineers who develop the software products, but those who perhaps only modify the code or integrate and test the software products along with other system components. Acquisition is a strategic process. It involves three distinct roles or communities of practice, the customer, the supplier, and the integrator. The customer is the entity that controls the bidding and product acceptance. The supplier is the organization that delivers and ensures the status of the end product. And thirdly, the integrator integrates lower level components into a single entity, which will be passed up to a higher level in the supply chain. And so all of these communities of practice require a defined process to properly execute their respective tasks. The graphic shown attempts to show that the suppliers source work from lower level organizations, and then they integrate that work into a single product, which is then supplied to a customer at the next level up in the hierarchy. The National Institute of Standards and Technology have outlined 10 principles that underwrite a competent supply chain lifecycle process. Principle one, is to uniquely identify supply chain elements, processes, and actors. This includes actions to establish unique identifiers and methods of identification to support provenance, as well as to address the effectiveness of acquirer and integrator identity management and access control policies. Principle two, limit access and exposure within the supply chain. This includes controlling access so that only appropriate actors are permitted to monitor or change supply chain elements or processes. Principle three, create and maintain the provenance of elements, processes, tools, and data. This includes the establishment of policies to assure provenance of tools, data, processes, 
in the supply chain. Principle four, share information within strict limits. This includes policies that need to be created that clearly define information sharing responsibilities. This would include information to be shared as well as information to be withheld. Principle five, perform supply chain risk management awareness and training. This includes policy and contractual requirements that address awareness and training needs in the supply chain. Principle six, use defensive de design for systems, elements, and processes. The idea here is to limit the compromise of elements, processes, systems, or information by building in a defensive design. Principle seven, perform continuous integrator review. This involves integrator review procedures that use multiple methods, including testing, monitoring, assessment, and auditing. Principle eight, strengthen delivery mechanisms. This requires inventory management policies and processes to include appropriate stocking and receipt management procedures. Principle nine, Assure sustainment activities and processes. This entails the insertion of clauses in contracts that ensure that the product will be given competent vetting and support. And finally, principle 10, manage disposal activities throughout the system or element life cycle. This entails the assurance that secure disposal requirements are included in all sourcing contracts. So taken together, using these 10 principles, it is possible to redesign the content for a course in supply, software supply chain risk management using COTS products. A general process can be designed and structured similarly to the waterfall methodology, with the two production stages, design and development of code, excluded due to COTS products already having been designed and coded. There are nine critical tasks that we've included in a proposed software design course. Number one, establish an acquisition strategy and policy. When the decision has been made to purchase a COT solution versus a custom built solution, an acquisition strategy needs to be developed. The strategy should include a description of the functionality of the solution, the delivery platform, operation and maintenance requirements, file storage options, service level agreements, and an implementation project work plan with estimated costs and timeline. Number two, establish a formal acquisition process, including activities and tasks. The process should include all phases to include the development of an acquisition strategy, requirements gathering, identifying potential suppliers, and request for proposals, proposal evaluation, supplier selection, and contract negotiations. Also service level agreement management, formal acceptance of software solution and evaluation of implement, implemented solution, continuous monitoring and quality improvement. All of these taken together would be really a, the, a formal acquisition process. Number three, specify the software requirements. This includes defining the requirements or uh, business requirements, developing a statement of work, as well as developing an RFP. Number four is to identify potential suppliers. This includes gathering and reviewing supplier information. Number five, establish contractual terms and conditions. This includes determining quality requirements, service level agreement expectations, and of course, remedy for non-performance and legal review. Number six is to evaluate proposals and contract, uh, and contract the supplier. Uh, this includes the evaluation of proposals, possible supplier on-site visits, uh, supplier selection, as well as contract negotiations. Number seven is to monitor the supplier progress to ensure all milestones are met and approve work segments. This includes ensuring performance measures are being achieved in vendor management. Number eight is to certify that all acceptance criteria have been satisfied and achieved. This includes satisfactory acceptance, testing outcomes, and decisions to accept, reject, or modify the solution. Number nine is to conduct an analysis of the software acquisition contract and retain performance data. 
This includes the evaluation of acquired software solution and ongoing evaluation of supplier performance. Incorporating the 10 principles and nine critical tasks ensure that students understand both best practices regarding performance for communities of practice, as well as a structured list of critical tasks and topics for software acquisition. So taken together, we propose the following four modules, and these can be directly mapped back to the performance and critical tasks. Module one is uh, the program initiation and planning. Um, the type of activities or tasks that would be uh, developed uh, and discussed would be, um, number one, how to define the project scope and any boundaries uh, that would include in the project itself, uh, apply, uh, identifying all of the supply chain elements, uh, understanding cost, scheduling, um, quality criteria, also uh, specifying the required functional capabilities, uh, as well as um, an entire conversation on risk, risk management, uh, monitoring the practices, as well as making sure uh, that the risk mitigation strategies are discussed as well as it relates to software assurance. Module two uh, would be the business requirements, uh, development of RFPs, contract terms. And so th this is where you would uh, specify uh, the supply chain assurance requirements, uh, the terms, conditions, uh, uh, any kind of metrics and measurements uh, that need to be developed in order to understand whether or not uh, the vendor and everyone on the project team is indeed uh, performing um, to whatever evaluation criteria that is developed. There also needs to be a statement of work um, detailed uh, as well as contractual terms, conditions, security features, updates, vulnerability testing, um, all, all those uh, items that would be involved in when you're dealing with um, contract negotiations. Uh, number three, module three uh, would be would include evaluation as well as responses to the RFP. Uh, this area, these topics would include uh, to ensure the supplier is satisfied satisfies actually the bid evaluation factors. Um, you want to make sure that the uh, supplier addresses security capabilities, also understands the statement of work, uh, as well as contains any kind of assurance cases. Um, topics also you want to include um, as far as evaluating the proposed software product, uh, the architecture, the defensive design uh, that would be included uh, in the systems, the elements, the processes. You also want to make sure that you evaluate the software security risks and the mitigation strategies, countermeasures. Uh, additional topics would be the evaluation criteria in the RFP um, that's used to determine the supplier selection. This is the area where you want to talk about contract negotiations as well as continuous integrator review. Module four uh, could include also developing plans for overseeing reviews and audits. You want to specify how performance will be evaluated. You also want to specify how architectural integration will be managed, how risks will be evaluated, um, how issues will be resolved. You want to specify how key personnel will be identified, trained, managed, as well as evaluated throughout the entire process. We want to talk about how to assure sustainment uh, activities and processes, the delivery of the product, the execution of acceptable processes also falls within this particular mod module. Um, additional topics would include manage the uh, disposal activities throughout the life cycle, as well as implement test cases, data, and the testing of deliverables. So the major components of the proposed instructional modules provide both a structure and a direction for teaching supply chain risk management as a defined area of study. 
we suggest that the subject matter be encapsulated in a capstone type course or a single process oriented course. If the course is offered at the undergraduate level, the focus should be more on the nuts and bolts of accomplishing the critical tasks. If the course is presented at the graduate level, then the emphasis is more logically on how to implement a unified supply chain risk management approach as a single coherent strategic process across all three communities of practice. And lastly, given the importance of this topic, we highly recommend making course materials available to fellow educators. The Software Institute, Engineering Institute, based at the Carnegie Mellon University, is one such venue that freely disseminates educational material and research and can be found online. Here is a list of some of our select uh, references and resources that were taken right from our paper. And here is our contact information. If you'd like to contact us, we'd be happy to hear from you.